Hey everyone, happy Tuesday. Today is August 24th and here in Los Angeles and Southern California, it is Kobe Bryant Day. It is the second Kobe Bryant Day to exist, August 24th, which represents both of his jersey numbers that he wore with the Lakers being eight and 24. Yesterday was actually his birthday. And I've mentioned before on this channel how big of a Kobe fan I was growing up. I was born and raised in Los Angeles. So the Lakers, I was just a diehard Laker fan, diehard Kobe fan. And obviously it's been almost two years since we've lost him, but I wanted to take today's video to commemorate him. Last month, I sat down with my really good friend, Nikki Boutet, who's a amazing photographer here in Los Angeles. And she spoke about her experience on the day of Kobe's passing, January 26th, 2020. She went down to Staples Center, down to downtown LA to take photos and videos of fans just gathering together, consoling each other and being there for one another after Kobe's tragic passing. Wanted to share this short snippet of this interview that we had um, and hear her experience just as a photographer in that moment um, and just how it pays off to kind of shoot things that you care about and things that you're passionate about even though someone's not paying you. So, but without further ado, here is Nikki Boutet. January 26th, a day we'll never forget. Right. Kobe. Yeah. His daughter and all the people that was on the, you know, private jet, you know, or the private, you know, helicopter. It was just tragic. Like, to go from that, you know, the night before and then to wake up to that, it's just like, huge transition, it's just like, whoa, you know, like, it just hits so hard, because also that Sunday morning, you know, it's Grammy day, so we, you know, I know I was focused on Nipsey, you know, him about to get his award, and just, you know, enjoy the Grammys, but to go, to get that type of news, you're just like, I, I just, my heart just dropped, like, it was just like a day I'll never forget, you know, hearing that type of news, so long story short, I go downtown, um, all the fans, and it's just a mixture of, you know, like people in, in their Grammy outfits, and then you see Kobe jerseys everywhere. So it's just like, it's just, it was just very sad. And it was just so gloomy too. So it's like the weather even fit for that day. It was like, it was so gloomy that day. And just Kobe fans everywhere, just coming together downtown LA Live. You see the picture of him and his daughter. It's just like, it just felt like a living nightmare. It just didn't feel real, and I'll just never forget, but I knew as a photographer, like, I had to go down there. And it's just like, I did cry at that moment when I found out, but then I got myself together, and I just, you know, I knew those, those were moments I had, that had to be captured. Go downtown, you know, take pictures and do videos of fans, you know, and all the flowers. It was just so much. It was a lot going on, but I just remember just, just standing there, just like in disbelief and just, like, I just couldn't believe it. Like, it's a feeling you just can't really explain. Obviously, you're like sad, you're numb, and I felt all those different emotions, but as a photographer, I just still kept shooting, you know, no matter how much pain I was in. It's like, I just kept, you know, shooting and capturing moments of fans, you know, kneeling down, crying, or fans that were talking about Kobe, saying thank you, or the Kobe chants. Like, it was just so much going on in just that one day, on the day that, you know, he passed that Sunday morning, so felt this overwhelming feeling of just like, wow, like I can't even believe this type of feeling. But again, when I went back to shooting throughout the whole week, you know, getting fans coming down there, paying their respects and people coming from all over, you know, I know as soon as they found out, I know it's people coming from out of state, who knows, you know, but obviously it was a lot of LA fans too. It was, it was a few guys who had a basketball court and one of my videos went viral. Yeah. Um, it was a little Hispanic kid and his dad, like, he shot, he made like two or three in a row and like went crazy. And uh, my video ended up making it Sports Center, ESPN. So it was like, it, that was a very emotional moment for me too. Cause as soon as I posted it, I got so emotional, I was crying. You know, people was like, oh my God, this video is so touching. And again, as a photographer, again, videographer, that's what makes my purpose, you know, so special. You know, it's just, it's deeper than just photos and videos. You know, we really love what we do. So that was a moment again, that I'll never forget. And it saddens me, it does make me emotional, like looking at all the photos and videos, still in disbelief, but you know, I don't regret it because that's what we do. You know, we capture moments no matter how bad or how good it is. Like, I feel like that's our purpose. 100%, and at the same time, you're also like 
documenting history. Like this is literally history, you know what I mean? Exactly. And it's like people 30, 30, 40 years from now, whatever, 100 years from now, when they look back at that, like your photos will be there to like commemorate that, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. And, I commend you for that because I, not to get deep on everyone for the moment, but I've ex I've been someone who has experienced a lot of death just in my family and just like growing up at a really young age and my coping mechanism, because I was a massive Kobe fan too. Like I was born and raised in LA as were you. Yeah. And I like, he was literally my hero, like a huge Laker fan. But for me, like my coping mechanism when it comes to death is just like, I need to just like be by myself and just like process it you know what i mean and as much as i really wanted to go to downtown i was like man i just i cannot be around that many people it's just like a lot for me you know what i mean right but like i'm glad someone like you like had the yeah. courage and, i think like, i'm opposite yeah. like i need to be around like i have moments where i need to be by myself too yeah. but then i kind of need to just be around and be be there for them like that's just how my heart is you know so it's like we were all hurting so it's like i need to just you know be there with other kobe fans and you know just like man nice. and have those moments where we're talking about kobe you know just to kind of heal a, a little bit in that moment even yeah. though we're going to be hurting when we separate again but it's just like i knew like yeah. my heart i knew i had to be down there i feel that yeah and yeah. but for anyone out there who's watching you know don't however you process things good or bad like yeah. don't feel bad for it you know what i mean exactly. clearly there's there's two people here and we process things very differently already exactly. yeah so whatever yeah. works for you like you know, feel free to do that. But at the same time, like, I think this was a testament just to like the, as a photographer, like being in those moments and putting yourself out there, like no one was paying you to go down there. You know, exactly. you wanted to no. do it. You wanted to do it because you wanted to be there and you felt a strong calling for it. And same, sure. same goes for anyone watching. Like, sure. you know, if you feel like you want, there's a, a moment in your town or your city, whatever that is like happening, you feel real strong passion yeah. um, to go down there. Like, I think it's super important just because you never know who's going to see it. You're capturing history at the minimum and you're doing it from like the good of your soul, I feel like. So for sure. that really translates well.